Hello, welcome to What's Bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. It's been a little while since uh, we've had a bubbling. We have some new things going on in Zim 10.6. So let's take a look at the Zim site now at zimjs.com. We can press on the logo Zim 10 or indeed down here where it says 10. These are the various things that are new in Zim 10. And we've been just adding up some more as we continue to build in Zim 10. We are now at Zim 10.6.0, and we've introduced a couple new components. So anytime there's a middle number update, uh, like 10.5, 10.6, etc., that means we've introduced something that is, uh, that's new, components, methods, that kind of thing. All right, so let's take a look at the D-pad here. Uh, the D-pad stands for directional pad, and what we found is on mobile, you, you don't have keyboards. So there's a number of uh, games, primarily, that use keyboards, and then you get into a mobile device and you've got no keyboard. Well, there's a keyboard, but you tend not to use them. So uh, people would have to fashion their own way of doing it through a motion controller, for instance, with touch, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, but the D-pad offers a nice, quick, easy interface here. So you just press on the D-pad with your finger. So that's me down there pressing on the D-pad. And uh, it moves around your object much like, uh, much like a keyboard uh, can do. As a matter of fact, we pass the D-pad into the motion controller. And uh, so the speed of this item here and, and, and other things here. So up here, there's the Uno Duo Try. is just a little tab up here. Uh, the Duo shows that we can go uh, horizontally as well. So the horizontalness of this is limited by the motion controller, although you can also specify on the D-pad that you just want two arrows. And then the last one here, try, shows multi-dimensional as well, almost like flying a quadcopter feel. So each thumb on your mobile device can control a direction up or down, and that sort of limits you to um, uh, horizontal or vertical, as opposed to the very first one, which lets you move everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, that is what's bubbling at Zim. If, if you take a look at the code here, let's see which one we're on. Uno, I will, uh, well, tell you what, let's go out to Adam and pick it from there. Desktop reveal, oh, not quite. Oh, that was close. There's the desktop, oh, 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 oh. Uh, Adam, here's Adam. We haven't set this up yet, so here's what we were working in. in what's bubbling and Zim. You may be interested in this this one too. Do you want to surprise what's bubbling? Oh, we should show you it. Uh, that's right, the sandwich. Okay, never mind about that one then. Let's go find that D-pad. So here's our, our directory structure on the left, and I think we threw the D-pad right in 10. Maybe Q-R-S-T 10. Here it is. Sorry about that bubbling and in 10 there's a d-pad 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 a b c d pad there we go all right and here is what that stuff looks like so open that up a bit so we're using 10.6.0 from the cdn and we made a circle <coughs> And then we made a new D-pad. So did we even pass any uh, circle? How, how does it know we're working on the circle? So it doesn't even know we're working on the circle. It's just a general default D-pad. There's also all these other, this was the, uh, the building file. So this first D-pad file is the, the file we use to create. How we do that is we, we put the class right in here, right in the, the um, HTML. We work on it all together. And this is us testing various parts of the D-pad as well. So you can come in and often, well, then what we'll do is we'll, we'll take out the D-pad and put it into Zim. And then sometimes we leave our test things here commented out. So you're welcome to try, try out uh, some of these changes as well. 
We've positioned it. By the way, there's something new in position, but we're going to get to that. We didn't actually use that something new here in positioning, but we'll do a, a separate bubbling on that because it's a lot of fun. And here we are also capturing an event on the D-pad. If we wanted to, we can call a change event on it and comment that for us. We can call a change event on the D-pad and get the uh, event objects dir x and dir y. And also you could get that through uh, the D-pad itself, D-pad. So do we call it D-pad? Oh, we call it D-pad h. Why do we call it D-pad h? <laughs> Which one are we on? We're on the first one. D-pad h, horizontal. I think that must have been during the testing. We may as well uh, take those off because it's more than a, a horizontal. Uh, yeah, that was us saying horizontal, I suppose. Okay, so we just called it now D-pad, and we can get the dir x and dir y on the D-pad. Now here's where we use the D-pad to actually control something. So we had mentioned that we didn't pass in the target of the circle at all to the D-pad, so the D-pad is independent. It's just a way to get these dir x and dir y's. But here in a motion controller, we pass in the target, which is the circle. So we could have built that circle right in there if we wanted to. We pass in the target. We say type D-pad. Now, is that right? Yeah, I guess so. We pass the, the specific D-pad into the type. So that's a little bit different. Just be, be aware of that. It is not quote D-pad. Uh, I think all, well, the pen does that too, I think. I think we pass a pen right into the motion. No, the pen's the target. Yeah, but, okay, you see, you see the difference? Um, when it's a type of pen, the pen itself is the target. So we then just use the word pen, I think, here. Oh, no, we don't, because uh, this would still be based on some uh, mouse movement or uh, key press or something like that. So this is a little bit different. We're passing not the word D-pad because we'd still, ha if we just pass the word D-pad, it's like, which D-pad? Well, the D-pad's not the target. Uh, you see what I mean? It's like it's almost, uh, we've got two things. It, the target is a circle. So here we're passing in a reference to the D-pad that we want. Okay, and then we're specifying speed. I did find that the speeds were a little bit different on uh, mobile and desktop. So you're welcome to, if it's mobile, up the speed a little bit. Otherwise, keep it slightly lower. And then there we are putting in a boundary. Do we need a boundary on this one? Yeah, I guess we did. So, uh, right, the 50 here and the height is just because this one. So open a browser. This one specifically has a bar on the top there. So we, we wanted to go halfway into the bar. No, the circle just naturally is going halfway off. So instead of going up too high, we put the boundary down there as well. Uh, okay, so, to do, to do. And then there's our couple tabs that are taking us into the other examples. So you can go through the other examples too. The other examples would be, we just specify that we want to access horizontal and all of a sudden that d-pad will have two arrows. You, it's a zim component so you can change a bunch of things about it, all the colors and different sizes and things like that. So uh, that has been uh, What's Bubbling at Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. Uh, that should be very handy for us to, to have on mobile. You can read about it more in the changes as well. And in the docs, you go to the docs of Zim, and then up top there's a link to the changes, and it introduces the D-pad there. Uh, have a great day, you guys, or night, depending. And we'll do some more bubblings, too, about Zim 10.6. Okay, ciao.